that he be filled with sorrow. He that is righteous, that he be righteous still. He that is holy, that he be holy still. Then John said, Jesus said, Behold, I have come quickly. Blessed is he that keep the sayings of the prophecy of this book.
may be seen. Each day I'll do a golden deed by helping those who are in need. My life on earth is but a span, and so I'll do the best I can. Life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done, where there will be no setting sun. That song is entitled A Beautiful Life. And we're here today to celebrate a beautiful life. Amen. For those of you that don't know me, I am Jack Evans Jr. And uh, I am humbled and honored to serve as your officiant today. Uh, 45 years of preaching, I can't ever remember having this particular task. I am humbled and honored that the family uh, asked me to do this. I was coming anyway, and I did not have to have anything to say or do because I just love this family. I love brother and sister Florence, and they love me. Uh, Clifford and Franklin are my brothers. Uh, I know exactly what this family is feeling today. Uh, it's almost four years now. My father and my mother passed. My mother passed on March the 31st. Seven months later, my father made the transition. And so I know the feeling uh, that the family has today, and I am just thankful that God has allowed me to come and show my respect and, and just let them know that I'm with you uh, in this time of need. Brother Florence, was always a very encouraging person to me in my ministry. Uh, I started preaching 45 years ago, and before I could even spell preach, he was there to encourage me. And uh, many of the days that I would call just to talk to him, and I knew when I called, I was going to get a good laugh somewhere in there because he loved to laugh, and laughter is good for the soul. And so I'm delighted to be here today and to serve uh, with these other ministers and there are many who have come and who have uh, passed on their condolences and we're just thankful for uh, the opportunity to stand with this family today uh, on uh, a difficult day but it was a beautiful life. They know it and we know it and so I'm going to try to follow our program as closely as I possibly can. Uh, we have two wonderful young men that will lead us in singing today, but we want to begin first with the opening prayer, and we're going to call on Dr. Stephen Thompson, the minister of Central Church of Christ in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to uh, take us to the throne of grace at this time. And now, O oh God, Thou who sat on the circle of the earth, You look down upon us as created man, and You providentially navigate the circumstances of our life. 
Because you are God and above thee there is none other. Because you are holy and we are not. Because you are merciful and we are not. Because you are gracious because you are loving, because you are kind, and we are not. But because there is none other greater than you, we come. In times like this, in times like these, where we need you, and we need you every hour. So now we ask, O oh God, that you bless this celebratory moment. And we know from what we have seen, you have already blessed this life of a man so great and so influential that we take the time to stop the busy work of our lives and to come just to be with the family and to be with the church and to be in his home going service as you welcome him home. And now, guide our thoughts guide our words and guide our intent that through all that we do and through all that we say that you will get the glory you will get the honor and you will get the praise this be our prayer this be our petition this be our plea in the blessed name of jesus in the blessed name of jesus in his name do we pray and do we ask these blessings in his name. Amen. Thank you so much. At this time we're going to call on George G. and uh, Chris Turner, two of our greatest singers in the brotherhood. They're going to tag team today handle our singing and we're going to sing along with him. Who's coming first? Okay. Chris Turner. Make up your mind. Amen. 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 Blessed is the man that endures temptation. He's tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Jesus said he's going to prepare our mansion You've had your sins washed away in the blood of the land. You've got a white robe. Mansion robe and crown waiting on us. I'm going to trade my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair. Christ lived to prepare a mansion for his children in the air. I'll join him in that land where tears no sorrow can be found. When I and my
The Old Testament. Selection at this time comes from Psalms, the 25th chapter. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. I trust in you. God. Do not let me be disgraced. Or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. But disgrace comes to those who try to deceive. Show me the path where I should walk, O oh Lord. Point out the right road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me. For you are the God who saves me. All day long, I put my trust in you. Remember O oh Lord, your unfailing love and compassion, which you have shown from long ages past. Forgive the rebellious sins of my youth and look instead through the eyes of your unfailing love. For you are merciful, O oh God. And then the reading from the New Testament comes from that familiar passage. 
of John chapter 14. From the NI, from the NLT version, New Living Translation. Don't be troubled. You trust in God, now trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's home, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. If this were not so, I would tell you plainly. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be where I am. And you know where I'm going and how to get there. Let the church say amen. About four weeks ago, I performed a service just like this. I did the eulogy for a man named James Tinsley Sr. And uh, consequently, James Tinsley, Tinsley Sr. and Franklin Florence Sr. were roommates at the Nashville Christian Institute years ago. Tinsley, I think, was in his 90s, or just approaching 90 years old, but they were good friends. I used to wait for them to get together on the campus of Southwestern Christian College so I could hear the stories from NCI, and I don't know how many of them were true and how many of them were, but it, it was so, so good to be in their company and listen to them uh, tell stories about the days in high school. My, my eulogistic remarks centered that day around the phrase that David uh, made, or oh, he's quoted in 1 Samuel 30, where David encouraged himself in the Lord. And uh, Brother Tinsley was like that. He was one who was able to encourage himself in the Lord. And as I look at Brother Florence, he too, uh, able to encourage himself in the Lord because he knew the Lord. We're going to call on Dr. Jerry Taylor, who is an alumnus of Southwestern Christian College. He's a professor at, the, uh, at Abilene Christian University, preacher for the North Tenant Hall Church of uh, not North Tenant Hall, 10th and Treadway Church of Christ in Abilene, Texas. And uh, he's my friend, and if you are a preacher, he's your friend. Uh, we're going to call on him for words of encouragement at this time. Now, usually I'm the one they have to come get long-winded, but today I'm the timekeeper, uh, and so, uh, but I, I know the men that are coming today, I don't think I'm going to have to come and get any of them, uh, very seasoned gospel preachers and friends of this Florence family, so would you receive at this time Dr. Jerry and Taylor? Despite this being the hour of death, we still possess the confident expectation of God's ability to heal the broken heart. Our faith assures us that those who die in the Lord will be seen again the 
beyond this veil of tears. On February 1st, first day of Black History Month, death silenced Minister Florence's voice, but it was too late to silence the life that he had already lived in solidarity with the poor. Though his voice is silenced, his life will continue to speak to generations yet unborn. His life will continue to speak in the midst of a nation that reneged on its promise to strive for a more perfect union for all its citizens, regardless of class, creed, or color. For generations to come, Minister Florence's knuckle prints will be seen as historical markers on the closed steel doors of American justice in a nation that relegated his people to the bottom of the American racial caste system. <laughs> Minister Florence understood the difference between God's justice and American justice. American justice is measured by man, but God's justice is measured by Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul says in Acts 17, 31, God has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. Every human encounter we have is measured by the Jesus justice. Minister Florence knew that the same Jesus we ignore today will be the same Jesus we meet at the judgment. You remember hearing Jesus say, whatever you do to the least of these, my brethren, you do unto me. Minister Florence knew that the following questions would be asked at the judgment, and he wanted to answer all of them in the affirmative. Jesus will ask, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me something to drink? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was sick or in prison, did you come visit me? When I needed affordable housing, did you fight for me? When I was unemployed, did you fight for me? When I was discriminated against on my job, did you fight for me? The Jesus justice kept Minister Florence from blindly following behind America's lady justice, whose blindfold kept her from seeing the suffering masses of the black poor who had for 400 years cultivated the soil and the soul of America. He refused to rely upon Eastman Kodak's picture of the future. He broadened their corporate lens and gave them a clear photograph of what an inclusive and racially diverse corporate structure and workforce should look like. All the resistance, all the betrayals, all the arrest, all the smear campaigns were the negatives that he took into the dark room of prayer. In the dark room of prayer, the negative were transformed and developed into the positive picture of hope, the positive picture of jobs, the positive pictures of social change, the positive pictures of affordable housing, and the positive pictures of community uplift. <laughs> Minister Florence was a visionary leader that also knew the importance of having a well-organized strategic plan of action. His leadership of the fight organization serves as proof in his belief that a bold vision could not lead to a just society unless there was a well-developed practical program that could turn vision into action. He knew that rhetoric alone could not move the mountains of injustice. He knew that rhetoric alone served no threat to the dominant power structures of oppression. He knew that rhetoric alone left people vulnerably exposed to the snarling faces of the police dogs of human brutality. 
He knew that rhetoric alone could not keep the powder keg of hope dry under the high pressure hoses of political sophistry and the social engineering of black community disintegration. He was also an avid reader of insightful literature that enlivened his mind and empowered him to be a creative thinker and a master strategist. On each of my visits to Rochester, Minister Florence always gave me an autographed copy of a book that he knew would impact my life and broaden my horizons. He encouraged me to read and to make sure that the theoretical knowledge that I gained permeated the daily activities of my life and the pursuit of Jesus' justice. He clearly understood that embracing a vision required the total consent of mind, soul, and body. He believed that spiritually rooted programs should have faith-centered arms that were long enough to bring the pie in the sky down to the dinner tables on earth. <laughs> Eric Butterworth described the leaders with visionary insight in this way. He says, there are great moments in the history of the world when a prophet seer appears with a great cosmic insight, and he is able to impart it to people with the persuasive power and beauty. And there are great moments in the lives of individuals when they come face to face with such a cosmic insight. When it becomes clear and convincing to them, such an insight and truth must not only be uttered, but to have authority, it must be lived by the person who utters it. It must become a transforming power in the daily lives of people who work with it. Minister Florence knew that it would require a comprehensive program if vision were to become concrete action. According to the following axiom, he was a conqueror. The axiom says, he who has a dream without a program is a dreamer. He who has a program without a vision is a worker. But he who has a dream and a program is a conqueror. It was his program that put him on the watch list of the powers and principalities and authorities in high places in this country. There is a difference between the loud bark of a leader that has no program and the leader who has a loud bark that is backed up by a program capable of rendering an effective bite to the hand of political oppression. Principalities and powers seek relationship with leaders who possess shallow commitments to the uplift of the poor. Principalities and powers seek alliances with leaders who can be easily seduced. Today, they shop for young leaders that already have a for sale sign in the front yards of their integrity. They shop for leaders who will sell their integrity at fair market value. Leaders with integrity are disappearing from our nation as fast as the glacial ice above the Arctic Circle. At the passing of each visionary leader, more light leaves the world. At the flickering, fading, and falling of each star, the canopy of heaven becomes more empty, leaving holes of darkness where brilliance once flashingly flourished. There is a dearth in the land for visionary leaders. From the loftiest pinnacles in America's urban centers to the dark fields of poverty in the small towns of rural America, we need a fresh vision for the future. Wisdom said many centuries ago, where there is no vision, the people perish. And there are those today who are sporting about another kind of vision. These are doomsday visionaries and mad prophets of the airwaves who foresee a future filled with racial hatred, violence, and war. It is a deadly vision implemented through programs cleverly designed to cause a genocidal destruction of targeted groups in America. Marianne Williamson says the problem in America today is not that there are more insane people than usual. The problem is that the most fear-based among us are now the most well-organized, most enthusiastic, and most efficient. We must become as vigilant, focused, and effective at the expression of love as others now are in the expression of their hate. As 
I hasten quickly to my conclusion before the bell rings. Minister Florence taught us that visionary leadership is not a spectator sport. Visionary leadership does not sit in the stands watching others control the narratives through false commentary on our history. Visionary leadership suits up, comes out, on, comes out of the stands, gets on the field, and it becomes totally engaged in helping to win the championship of freedom and fair play. We are reminded today that this is our season. Coach Minister Florence would remind us today that we must stay in it to win it. This is not a time for inactivity. Our season is not over yet. If you are alive today, it means that you were born into the world to be a part of the dream team that has made it into the Super Bowl of life. Now that we are here, everyone has to play their assigned positions privately and carefully. Coach Minister Florence would have us to be careful of who we allow to huddle with us. Visionary leadership does not allow enemies to huddle with their team. Huddling with the enemy provides inside details about the next play. If the enemy is in the huddle, he has access to the specifics of the next play. And once the enemy is in the huddle, gets the specifics of the next play, he hurriedly takes the information to the press box. And once in the press box, he publicly announces to the opposing team that the next play is going to be before it can be put into motion on the field. We must learn to plan privately and execute publicly. The quarterback of creativity must pass the dream to the wide receiver of imagination. And the wide receiver of imagination must pass the dream to the running back of vision. And the running back of vision must run the dream all the way into the end zone of the promised land. Once we catch the vision, let us run with it. There is no time to sit out a season. We must run with the vision before the clock runs out. Despite all the blocks and tackles, keep running. Despite the injuries, keep running. Ignore all the boos and hisses from the fans of your opponents, keep running. Run through trials, hardships, and betrayals, keep running. Run through the setbacks, setups, and breakups, keep running. Run through the states of depression, loneliness, and anxiety, keep running. Run up here, keep running. Run down here, keep running. Run in the rain, keep running.